This is Selma Schimmel at ASCO in Chicago 2011. And uh, we're continuing our discussion, this time about breast cancer, with a group from regular and favorite, Dr. Joan Mortimer, Vice Chair, Medical Oncology and Therapeutics Research, Director of the Women's Cancers Program, Professor of Medical Oncology at the City of Hope National Medical Center, Duarte, California. Hello, Dr. Mortimer. How are you, Shilma? So anyone who's had breast cancer, especially anyone who's taking uh, one of these drugs that will impact your or hormonal levels, like estrogen, let's talk about hot flashes. Yes. So, you know, hot flashes are reported by up to 90 to 95 percent of women who have been treated for breast cancer. And hot flashes in in the population of breast cancer survivors can occur because chemotherapy put them into menopause, because they were in menopause and stopped their hormones, or, or just because of normal aging and they're taking and they become uh, menopause, or they become naturally menopausal and have hot flashes, or the drugs that we give them, tamoxifen and the aromatase inhibitors all do cause hot flashes. But you know, the, the interesting thing is that there does seem to be an association between hot flashes and the benefits of therapy and a number of presentations here um, at this meeting support the fact that women who get hot flashes seem to do better than women who don't experience hot flashes. But at the same time, um, studies show that women who get hot flashes are more likely to stop the hormone. So, you know, one of the take-home messages is, is that the people who are most likely benefiting from these hormones are also the folks most likely to stop them. So I have a question. Uh, the woman who doesn't have a breast cancer history or isn't dealing with active disease goes through menopause naturally. Some women have hot flashes uh, and sweat a lot. Some women may just get, you know, a, a minor menopause-type symptom. So what does that mean for the average American woman or the average woman who doesn't have severe hot flashes versus the one that does? Is, is their health in question? The breast cancer population, it didn't, you didn't have to be really miserable with hot flashes and sweats to benefit from hot flashes. Any degree of hot flash seemed to be beneficial. But there really is something that the body is telling us when you have hot flashes. Like women who have hot flashes seem to be more likely to have bone loss, to get osteoporosis. So the hot flash really is a marker of some low estrogen level in the body. I know what a hot flash is. I've had one. More than, but can you tell us what is a hot flash? Classically what happens with hot flashes is that, is that there is a sudden rush of incredible warmth that may last for, on average, it's like 90 seconds, but it may be three, four minutes for some women. And it's followed by a feeling of, of chilling, of, of coldness, and often accompanied by perspiration. And what it seems to be due to is th that after menopause, that the body's ability to regulate heat and cold changes is is altered and so that you don't you aren't able to uh, readjust your internal thermostat um, over wide ranges of temperature and so you get these hot flashes. And so for the men that are viewing this with the women they love we are asking them to cut us a little slack. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's absolutely true. I mean, I think, you know, the, the variability in hot flashes is, is huge. You know, some people, it's just a little discomfort. Other people go out and buy scarves to cover their, their, their heads because they're constantly pouring sweat down. So it's an incredibly embarrassing and humiliating uh, event. What is it about 4 o'clock in the morning? We all, when it starts, it's like clockwork. What is that? It is a very interesting thing. Nobody really understands why that happens, why it happens. Because it's, 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 it's not even clear whether women have night sweats after a hot flash or if the night sweats wakes them up. And, and, and so it's independent of the hot flash. But it's a fascinating thing that there are millions, literally, and probably billions of women, really, worldwide, that are awake at between 2 and 4 o'clock in the morning with a hot flash. Those receptors in the brain that help with sleep and with mood, with libido, and with thermal regulation are actually all related to serotonin. And, and so presumably there is a mechanism that has some commonality, but we don't really understand that just yet. So if it's related to serotonin, would 
And I knew there was some work going on early about whether or not antidepressants that readjust serotonin levels could make a difference. All these antidepressant drugs that actually raise the serotonin level in your brain actually do work in women who have hot flashes, whether it's because they're taking a hormone pill for breast cancer or went into menopause because of chemotherapy or just natural menopause. All of them have been shown to benefit. Not everybody, but with a, about a third of women get better because of them. So that's something for a viewer who is unable to take any hormonal support but would like to find something to maybe help. They could speak to their doctor about the possibility of using an antidepressant, not necessarily for depression, but for this maintenance of their symptoms. You know, there's no question that these drugs do improve the quality of life. And unfortunately, there's such a stigma attached with being on an antidepressant. But they work differently when you have a hot flash. For these drugs to affect your depression, you have to be on them for three, four weeks. Most women, if they're going to work for hot flashes, they work within about seven to ten days. You start to feel better, and most importantly, you sleep better. Is the dosing different than it would be for depression? So we usually start with a very low dose, as you do with depression, um, and, and then work your way up if they did not do uh, provide relief. Thank you, Dr. Mortimer. We Thank will you, Sam. Next meet in San Antonio. Yes, Dr. Joan Mortimer, Vice Chair, Medical Oncology and Therapeutics Research, Director of the Women's Cancers Program, Professor of Medical Oncology at the City of Hope, National Medical Center, Duarte, California. Thank you.